Trust can be easily abused, even more between systems, users, and applications. And that's where the concept of zero trust uh, have emerged in cybersecurity. Welcome to the Future Now Talks, Nikolai. What is zero trust and why is it so important? I think you defined it beautifully. Uh, it's really a, the, the discipline of being able to establish exactly the requirement in communication between systems or actions within applications or what a user is allowed to do on a machine. We want to make sure that that's kept at the absolute bare minimum in order to make sure that the attack surface of systems is limited as much as possible. Interesting. So how can you implement this zero trust uh, between machines, uh, applications and users? First of all, zero trust is not really a piece of technology. It's many different technologies that you typically tie together in a solution and it's more design ambition more than a specific product. But it's, uh, it's something that we can implement when systems are communicating between each other. So that's where we then implement technology on the network that allows us to control that. It could also be controlling when a user connects and locks onto the machine that we ensure that that specific individual has the bare minimum trust on that machine or the bare minimum capabilities on that machine in order to do their job. And then finally, it could also be that when a user logs into an application that we ensure that that user identity in the application has the bare minimum capabilities in that application in order to do their job. So Nikolai, what do you think would happen to organizations who don't implement zero trust? Thinking that their security is fine as it is now, so there's no need for it really. What do you think? Unfortunately, we don't really need to think too much and speculate too much because we can just read the news. I think in the last couple of years, we've seen many examples of, uh, of malware attacks in organization that, allowed, that were allowed to grow too big within the organization simply because there was too much trust between systems. So as a good example, malware attacks is something that's really a problem for organizations. And typically when the first malware uh, gets, uh, infects the organization, if you haven't implemented zero trust and limited your attack surface within your infrastructure, that malware can laterally move inside the organization and infect multiple systems. If zero trust had been implemented effectively in, this, in an environment like that, you would have been able to contain that specific infection to just a single system or something. Hmm, interesting. So it just takes one malware to crack the system. There's no zero trust. Absolutely. And actually, it just takes one malware to crack an infrastructure if there's no zero trust in place. How do you, how can you support uh, organizations in implementing it? Where do they start? So on Hilbert U, we've been implementing Zero Trust for a number of organizations. And very key is that it's not just a technology uh, exercise. Technology is part of it, but it's also about understanding what is the trust between systems, what is the trust between users and systems, and what is the trust between users and applications. Um, and we help customers in identifying that in their organizations. And then we also help them on the technology, on making sure that they, they get the right technology, and finally, that the technology is implemented and managed in the correct way. Is zero trust something we need on all pieces of information, all kinds of data, or is it just the sensitive data? Uh, actually, it depends a little bit. I agree that you do not necessarily need the same level of segmentation between systems uh, in the full infrastructure, but I think anyone can benefit from looking at utilizing zero trust where applicable. If there is something that you want to bring from the future today, what would it be? And if there's something here today that you want to preserve and protect and keep for the future, what would it be? Oh, that's a very good question. Uh, there's many, many interesting things that's happening right now and things that will impact our lives in the, both in the short term, but also long term future. Um, I think, first of all, everything that we do around mobility, how we're thinking about how to move around. You know, I'm always fascinated when I see electric vehicles on the roads and, uh, and, and how we're starting to think about uh, how we move from A to B. That's one thing that I would like to see happening much quicker. Um, what I would like to preserve for the future, um, I think uh, digital transformation. And the reason why I'm saying that is that uh, 
Uh, I think right now, digital transformation, there's a lot of opportunities for our society in, in how we rethink how we do stuff, both in our private lives, but definitely also in our business lives. The last year has been a very good example of that, uh, how we started doing stuff in a different way. And unfortunately, that kind of transformation is under a lot of risk from cybersecurity incidents, right? Because if we get more and more dependent on those systems, it's also more and more important that we ensure that they are available and that they're secure. Uh, and, and that's where we, we sometimes have a conflict. So I really hope that, that we will be able to, uh, to maintain that security in those digital transformations moving forward. Thank you, Nikolai, for joining us on Future Now Talks. At Future Now, we bring the latest technologies by collaborating with startups, IoT developers, and clients. And that's what the Future Now Talks are all about. So stay tuned.